For this balancing equations quiz, you're given five questions and then a bonus. Answer the questions and then go to that place in the video and check your work. Make sure you got it right. For each quiz question, you'll find explanation, the answer, and then links to other helpful videos and information. This is Dr. B and enjoy the quiz. There are two main reasons we balance chemical equations. The first is to obey the law of conservation of mass, and then the second is to get those ratios, those coefficients, those are ratios. Let's look at the law of conservation of mass first. So here we have our equation and we're, we're showing how these molecules might look, H2O2 and then H2O. So we have a chemical reaction. These two combine to produce this, but it kind of doesn't make sense. Let's watch how this might happen. So we have our H2 here, splits apart, and then we have an O2, there's H2O. But what about this, this extra oxygen? It doesn't show up in our equation. So we're not obeying the law of conservation of mass. In this equation, where does it go? It's just gone, and that doesn't happen. Let's balance the equation so we can obey the law of conservation of mass. I'll put a two here as a coefficient, and then a two here. So now I have two times two is four hydrogens, two times two, four hydrogens, two oxygens, and then the one times the two, two oxygens. So it's balanced. And then to make this correspond, I now need two hydrogen atoms and two water molecules. So we have our oxygens, they break apart. And then the hydrogens, we get two here. There's an H2O molecule. We get two here. There's an H2O molecule. And now it's all balanced. We had two molecules of hydrogen plus one molecule of oxygen, and we got our two molecules of H2O. If we wrote all the molecules in, that would look like this. So in short, we balance chemical equations to make sure we're obeying the law of conservation of mass. The other reason is we get the numbers here, two, the one, and the two. Those are ratios, and we use those to calculate chemical quantities. To balance this equation, Sometimes it's easy to write out a chart like this so we can have the atoms on this side and compare them to the other side, reactants and products. So I can count my coefficients up here. There's a one here, even though it's not written. There's a two chlorines. There's a one for the sodium and then a one for the chlorine. So these are the numbers of atoms I have on each side of the equation. So I can only change the numbers in front, not these little numbers. I can't change the subscripts. The numbers in front, they're called coefficients. So right now it's one, one, one. If I put a two in front of the NaCl, I can change that coefficient. And this two applies to everything. I'd have one Na times two. That would give me two Na's. But the one chlorine times the two, that would give me two chlorines. So I balance the chlorines. And then I can fix the sodiums by putting a two in front of the sodium atom here. One times two. That gives me two. And I've balanced the equation. So the coefficients are two, one, two. And remember, I only changed the numbers in front, the coefficients. I didn't change the subscripts. One of the big places people have problems when they're balancing equations is they don't understand the difference between coefficients and subscripts. So this is really a key skill. So I'm going to circle the coefficients. These are the numbers in front of the substances. That's a coefficient, that's a coefficient, and that's a coefficient. So the coefficients, they apply to the whole substance. I have four iron atoms. I have three times the two. I have six oxygen atoms. And then for the Fe2O3, I have two times two. That's four. Two applies to everything. Two times three, six oxygen atoms. The subscripts are the number after the element. Although there's nothing written after the iron, we assume there's a one there. So we'll put a box around that. Let's put a box around our two. There's another subscript and another subscript. Remember, you can't change these subscripts when you balance equations. You can only change the coefficients. This equation is a little bit more complicated, but not too bad. So let's count the atoms up. We have one carbon, four hydrogens, and two oxygens. On the product side, we have the one carbon, two hydrogens. And be careful, you have two oxygens here, plus you have the one oxygen here. So that gives us three oxygens. Let's balance the hydrogens first. We can change our coefficient here to two. So now two times two, that gives us four hydrogens. And then we need to change our oxygens. So we have the two oxygen atoms here, plus we have one 
times two, that gives us two. So we have four oxygen atoms. And if we want to balance the oxygens, we have two here and four here. We'll change our coefficient, two times two. That gives us four. And now everything's the same on each side of the equation. We're obeying the law of conservation of mass. This equation, it's balanced. So for this equation, we'll count the atoms up again. We have two hydrogens, two chlorines, then one hydrogen on the product side and one chlorine. So to balance the equation, we just need to double the hydrogen and chlorine. We can put our coefficient in front of the HCl. Now we have one times two. That gives us the two hydrogens. Those are balanced one times the two. Now we have two chlorines and those are balanced. And we could represent it like this. We could put our H2, our Cl2 here, and then when these split apart, we'd end up with our H's, HCl here, and then an H and a Cl here. So this equation is balanced because we can rearrange the atoms and end up with the same thing as our coefficients. If you were asked to represent the individual atoms here for the entire equation, that would look like this. We have one hydrogen plus one chlorine molecule. We get two HCl molecules. So for the bonus, we're back to our balanced equation for water again. We have our two molecules of hydrogen plus one molecule of oxygen. We get our two molecules of water, two to one to two. And these are ratios, and that's really important, especially as you go on in chemistry. So for every two molecules of H2, I use one molecule of oxygen. That's a two to one ratio. Likewise, if I have one molecule of oxygen, I end up with these two molecules of water, a one to two ratio. Now think of it this way, and this is why it's important. If you're given seven molecules of oxygen, how much water would you expect to get in this equation? This one to two, that means we've doubled it. So if we had seven, we'd end up with 14. If we had two, we'd double that to get four. These ratios are very useful as we move on in chemistry and we start working with chemical quantities and amounts of substance. This is Dr. B. I hope you found this quiz helpful. You'll find links in the description and at the end of this video. Thanks for watching.